Okay, everyone, I'm going to give a brief demonstration about doing the uh, living wallpaper assignment sort of end to end uh, in terms of a technical approach. I'm not going to be talking about the art aspects, just sort of the mechanics of being able to make a looping GIF and exporting all the frames and converting it into uh, movies and GIFs and things like that. So let's, let's begin. Uh, first of all, I'm going to work uh, offline. Um, I'm going to be working uh, using the processing IDE with P5JS. So uh, this over here is the processing IDE. Uh, you can get it from processing.org. But I'm going to be using the P5JS mode, which is JavaScript mode as opposed to Java or Python modes. And that's available um, right over here. Uh, I have to pull down this menu and having installed the P5JS mode, I now have it accessible to me. So P5JS mode right there. If you need to install it, you can go to, um, uh, to the import library and add tools and things like that, uh, and then you'll be able to get that. Okay, so uh, here's P5JS, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new sketch. That's what we see here. And maybe I'll save this sketch uh, in my sketchbook uh, as um, uh, living paper. All right, I'm going to save that. And so I've now uh, saved it. It looks like it's changed my dash to an underscore, which is fine. And if you want to know where it saved it, I can go always go to sketch, show sketch folder, and this shows where it's located. It's actually located in my sketchbook, which is in my documents folder. So documents, processing, living paper, there it is. Here's this, this sketch folder here. Okay, that's great. So here's this, uh, this program. So far, it does nothing. Um, if I run this, it actually kicks open a live server and uh, and begins a new window. Let's let's uh, let's get there though in just a minute. First, um, here's our assignment, and I'm going to grab the template code, which you should be using to start your your work from. Um, the template code produces this animated GIF. Uh, for our project, we have to change maybe the the setup uh, call because we, we need minimum dimensions of 640 by 360 in order to produce a 16 by 9 aspect ratio uh, loop for zoom backgrounds. So anyway, I'm just going to kind of grab this code here. So I'm just going to kind of copy it and kind of select all this and copy that and then sort of just replace this code with it. This is uh, that sketch that you just saw. And uh, so now I can actually kind of hide the window away and give myself a bit more space over here. Okay, fine. So if we want to run this, when we run this, it's going to kick open a new window. Let's have a look here. Um, Okay, so this is now running a local server. Uh, uh, my Chrome is connecting to my local server on uh, address 127.0.0.1 on port 8036. That's basically localhost on port 8036. And here's this thing running. Now, I haven't generated any images yet, but it's working and that's good. So right off the bat, uh, I'm gonna change my nickname to Golan because that's me. Whoops, Golan, hey. And I'm gonna um, change the dimensions of this thing to 640 by 360, you should do at least that. Uh, you may want to do uh, 1280 by 720, but remember we want a 16 by nine aspect ratio at least this big. Okay, um, and now if I uh, sort of hit save and kind of run this again, it's gonna kick, kick up with a new window uh, and here it is, it's a little bigger. Um, your designs will be more of an environment. This is just a very simple loop to show off some technical things. Um, you can see here that there's a, a white square moving and a pink square moving. The white square is moving linearly. The pink square is using one of these sort of uh, expressive shaping functions we've talked about. Um, okay, so now how do we get this to actually export frames? Well, that's actually enabled by the template code that I gave you. So how do we do that? Um, it says here um, that we're going to set be enable export variable to true. This way it's possible for me. It's like a, it's like a little toggle that allows me to uh, have the possibility of exporting frames and then when it's actually time to 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 actually export those frames I'm going to press F to do the export and we're going to look in our downloads folder which I've conveniently opened up over here on the left hand side okay so I'm going to say be enable export equals true all right save that close this uh, window over here save that and run so here it is it's running now it's time for me to do the export so keep your eye on this downloads window because pretty soon it's going to start filling up with lots and lots of images. Here I go. I'm going to basically, I'm in here and I'm going to hit F and all of a sudden it wants permission. So I'll say allow and you'll notice how my download uh, window starts filling up with, uh, with frames. The template is currently set up to produce 120 frames, which when compiled into a loop uh, will loop seamlessly without a hiccup. 
Okay, great. So here they are, and they're coming, coming, and coming. Go on frame 0, 0, 3, 8, and so forth. Okay. Um, if you want to change the number of frames in your loop, uh, you can do that here with this number of frames in loop variable, obviously. And um, just a kind of a quick tour of this uh, um, this template code, you're probably not going to change anything in the draw call. Okay, you're probably going to leave it alone, in fact. Um, all of your work is going to be done in the render my design function, which takes a number from 0 to 1 called a percent complete fraction. So the render my design, this is where your art goes, as you can see here. Render my design, it's taking this percent, that, that, that number is a, zero, a float between 0 and 1. This tells us um, how far through the loop I am. Okay, well, good news. It's done baking, and as you can see over here, I've got 119 uh, frames um, that it exported. We can have a quick look at them if we just want to kind of just like look at them here. I'm going, to, I'm going to sort of like tap through them. That looks pretty good. I'm going backwards from the end. All right, that's great. So if I want to compile that into an animated GIF, I might do that with um, a tool like uh, easygif.com. Uh, before I do that, I'll actually make a movie using QuickTime. Uh, so let's actually make the movie. Uh, here's QuickTime Player. Um, there's a lot of ways you can make a movie. You can use Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects. Um, there's online tools. Uh, there's FFmpeg if you like using the command line. I'm just going to say open image sequence. And I'm going to navigate over to my downloads. I'm going to grab all these frames. I'm going to say choose those media. Um, I guess I have some options here. Do I want it to be six frames per second? Maybe. Uh, I'm not sure. We could try it out. It's going to be pretty, pretty speedy. Uh, maybe I'll do 30 frames per second just to be on the safe side. I'll say OK. It's writing the video. And now let's play it. That looks pretty good. To make sure that it's playing with a loop, I'll say view with loop mode set. That's over here. And now it should loop seamlessly. And this is an actual video, not a GIF, but a video that I can use in my Zoom uh, tomorrow during class. OK, so there you can see it's looping seamlessly. Now, let's make that GIF that we were talking about as well, because I'm asking you for two things. I want to have a Zoom background, which is a video. And we also want to be able to make an animated GIF, which is a looping GIF that we'll upload to the website. OK, so, oh, you have to save this. I'll export this as my loop or Golan loop or something like that. Golan video loop or something like that loop. And I'll save this on my desktop. So we'll say save. And there it is, Golan video loop.mov. Fantastic. So uh, suppose we want to make a GIF out of these things. Well, OK, how do I do that? I'm going to go to easygif.com. I like this one. There's, there's several of these GIF creator type, um, type websites. Uh, oops, I meant to say easygif.com, not easygif.um. OK, let's go there. Um, we're going to go to GIF Maker. I'm going to choose some files. I'm going to go to my Downloads folder, choose all of these files here. I'm going to say open. It's going to take a minute to um, grab all those. So I'm going to say uh, it's chosen 120 files. Let's close some of the ads. Upload and make a GIF. Now it's going to upload. As you can see down here, it's kind of taking its time, 81%. And now it's done. OK. And here we go. Um, here's uh, the results of that. It puts all the frames here. I'm going to set the delay time between frames to a third to a thirtieth of a second or, or three hundredths of a second, give or take, and make sure that the loop count is set to empty. This way it loops forever. And I'm going to say make a GIF. Okay, here's the GIF it made. Now uh, it uh, tells me that I can. I, it's currently four and a half megabytes. Turns out I can optimize this by reducing the file size. I can do that by going to the optimize button over here, and it's going to provide me with a bunch of different ways that I can optimize this GIF. Um, for example, uh, I can set the uh, compression level pretty high, and I'll say optimize GIF, and then a minute later or so, it'll produce uh, an image which, instead of being four and a half megabytes, might be something closer to like a megabyte. And here it is, and it's one and a half megabytes, so 69% smaller. Okay, then you can just grab that and stick it on here, and now we've got uh, a GIF and a video loop uh, all done for us. Now, um, maybe one final wrinkle is how do I include shaping functions in uh, this this program that I wrote um, over here? And uh, currently, there's no shaping functions in here that are explicit. I just have some code that I ripped out of p5.func. 
uh, which is over here. This is this double exponential sigmoid. That's what's making that little pink square move in that nice way. But what if I want to bring in the library? Well, we can actually do pretty easily. I'm just going to say show sketch folder. Here's the sketch folder for um, for this current sketch, living paper that, that sketch. And there's a folder here called libraries. And inside here we see p5min.js. We're going to actually bring p5.func in there as well. So let's download p5.func. And I'm going to open up my downloads folder so it's ready to receive that. Uh, let's say open with downloads. Let's get rid of these old frames here. Move to trash. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to see p5func show up in here when I download that. Okay, there it goes. There's the zip file for p5.func. Um, I'm going to crack that open. Now the zip file has been opened up. Uh, we can see over here that uh, there's a folder called lib, and in there is p5.func.js and p5.func.min.js. Either one is fine. I'll use this one here. I'm going to grab that, drag it into the libraries folder in my sketch folder for that sketch. Once again, you can get to that sketch folder by going sketch, show sketch folder. That's how you can find out where it is in the finder. It's in your home directory most likely. Okay, so now that's been added to the project, but um, it has not been added to uh, uh, the actual code, so the code doesn't know about it yet. To do that, we have to go over here, and we're going to add it just like P5 is added with another script line like so. So we're going to put this in here. We'll say p5.funk.js, and that should do it. That's in the index.html tab. Back over here on Living Paper, um, this now has the ability to access those kinds of functionality. So if, for example, I were to uh, make an easing func an easing object over here, there's a, a new p5.ease that's available from the p5func website. Uh, I could say, for example, that var um, over here in uh, render my design. I could say, for example, that var my easing function is one of these easing functions. And uh, if I wanted to use that easing function, where I currently have uh, hard coded a kind of double double uh, exponential sigmoid. This is just because I, I actually literally copied and pasted the code in here. Now we could actually use the the, the full panoply of, of functions available in p in p five dot func. So instead of saying this, I could say for example, uh, var, var eased equals my easing function of this percent with a parameter of zero point seven. Uh, I'm not going to copy that part. And now we can do that, and it should just work. I'm hit save and run, and we'll have a look here, and you can see over here. Oops, it's on my, my other window. Uh, it's working, which means we can actually get other kinds of, of, of functions in here. I refer you to the documentation for p5.func. Okay, thanks everyone.